okay you can see here in the background you have two process which is independent and cooperating if you heard about independent you know already what is the meaning by independent it's not only apply in terms of your computing uh, in terms of your process but uh, we ourselves as a human also if you heard about independence means that it will not effect or not relay real life uh, with uh, each other so same also with the independent process a process that do not share data with other process so it is like stand alone stand alone process for the independent process independent process also cannot effect or affected by executions of other process so you can just uh things that independent process is uh long ranger uh solo single person which is not going to share any information uh it will not affect and also did not affect others process well for the cooperating process it can affect or affected by educations of other process which is versa from the independent process uh, another one more things under cooperating process is processes directly share lo logical address space example like code and also data or processes share data through files or messages so you just need to know which is virus like this which is it share but independent do not share data so how it share uh, through files and messages so two things before you go further under synchronization you need to know on the uh, the meanings of independent process and cooperating process okay well uh, there is another things that you need to uh, aware which is about concurrent access Sorry, I I'm not feeling well. Uh, I I think I uh, actually when I arrived here back, uh, I got flu. <laughs> I think I got fever. Uh, last time it's okay. <laughs> I think it start with there is a cat coming to our house. Uh, but the uh the cat stay outside but uh, a lot of it like a, a new kittens coming in so i think i get allergic from cat <laughs> normally if like one or two is okay but uh, when it's many so uh if you notice that last time on uh, before i also uh i'm not feeling well also right uh, because it start uh deliver a new baby uh i think four uh but one of the cat uh died last time and then there is another three uh all together five cat outside at my house i cannot like uh tag them and put them somewhere else because uh, they come to my house right so i don't know what happened <laughs> so now i allergic so i think I need my friend to help me. It might be take uh, the cat from my house also because my my son also uh, got asthma. So uh, last two days we repeat. Yesterday I go to clinics, okay, <laughs> uh, to take a nap. Uh, because if you re still remember last time uh, our class, if you still re uh, heard about the recording, my son cough right non-stop so at night uh he did not sleep so i don't know might be we bought uh allergic with cat <laughs> uh 
I cannot like breathe well also. Mm. I don't I, I don't say that I don't like cat but I think because I allergic so I cannot take care of them. <laughs> okay, so uh might be I can like need to mute myself uh in the middle of uh teaching, okay? So let's continue. Concurrent access, accessing of the same data at the same time by more than one process. Thus, the concurrent access to share data may result in data inconsistency. Maintaining data consistency requires a mechanism to ensure the orderly execution of cooperating processes. So, you have another one term that quite important which is REST condition. What is the REST condition? It is a problem in concurrent education. The synchronization mechanism is usually provided by both hardware and the operating system. Illustration of the problem, uh, the procedure uh, consumer problem. So it is under illustrations of the problem. Later on, you're going to know there is a several methods or algorithm to solve all the problem. This one is just a background before you go deeper. So basic consumption, load and store instruction are atomic. So all of these uh, from like uh, page number one, uh, this page and later on you can see several. It is a uh, more on theory and if it's coming out on theory, you know that it's going to be asked in a multiple choice question. So you need to remember the terms, the definitions of the terms, uh, the differentiation between independent and cooperating process, uh, what is also a uh, meaning and uh, what will be covered in terms of these two and also the concurrent access. Next, uh, why a rest condition occurs? So two processes may be uh, occur in terms of the rest condition which is, still remember, crash condition is a problem in concurrent education. When, uh, why uh, the problem can occur in the concurrent education? So, because of executing simultaneously, when you try to execute simultaneously a process, when you have two processes, try to execute it simultaneously. It can occur a rest condition. Another one more thing is uh, when you try to assess the same global variables when you have two process. So this is the things uh, normally will be asked in your multiple choice question also uh, which is uh, it will ask you, give you a list, and then it will ask like, okay, what is the uh, condition uh, when, uh, why a rest condition will be occur? So the condition is, might be we just change each. One process may be uh, run, and then you try to uh, assess the, global variables so we just like uh, remove the same because we said about one processes so you know oh it is not because uh, a rest condition will occur when you have at least two process uh, try to uh, assess the global variable so just as simple as that you can be asked with a question so example uh, in terms of a rest condition uh, can be a cure when the fundamental problem in concurrent is processes interfacing with each other. So you try uh, 
to assess this uh, global variable when you have shared both global resources between two processes. This can be illustrated by surprising simply example. So using this command, you can see also this is example how we're going to come up with the conditions of rest, condition occur. Okay, another one more thing. Wait, huh? <laughs> Okay, this is a, a example when you have a uh, two process. Imagine two process. You have a process of P one, and another one is P two. But you try to execute with the code at the same time. So when you try to execute this code at the same time. Uh, with the following interleaving due to the multi-programming. So first, let's say, when you try to execute this code and this code together, similar. So P1 enter this code, but is interrupt after reading the characters of X into the chain. So uh, after that, P2 enter this code and run it to completions, reading and display the characters of Y. This is example, it's not certainly going to be <laughs> X and Y. This is just a, to, to show you a variable. Then after that, P1 is resumed back after you're done with your P2 just now. But now change content the characters of Y from the execution of P2. So P1 will display the wrong character because supposedly it's going to use the X. But it's already interrupted by your P2. This one is just an example of problem. Example of a problem when you have to process. So this one sometimes might be you can uh, be interrupt with another way. It is not supposedly to be following this problem, but you need to know. Okay, some of the problem can come up when you have to you try to run and execute a similar. Then suddenly when you try to execute P one because. You also run P2, so P2 will interrupt when uh, you try to change a get chart. But sometimes I mean you can also interrupt here at the second line. So it depends. Only that you know, okay, it is might be interrupt later on, and you can come out with the wrong character display, wrong output. So this will be happen with these two conditions. <clears throat> so the essential problem is when you have the share global variables, especially this one, because this is sharing the global variable. P1 set the change, but this right is subsequently lost during the execution of P2. The general solution is to allow only one process at time. To enter the code that access chain. So it is not necessary to be this code. Sometimes you have another different code which is pointing up using a, a global variables, sharing your global variables. So it can be also come up with the uh, quite similar problem. Uh, so, you can see here, the general solution is to allow only one process. You cannot run it multiple uh, education when you have or you need to have a access to your global variable. 
So here you can see enter the code access for the chin here, which is just code is often called a critical section. Where one process is inside the critical sections of code, other process must be prevented from entering the section. That's why you cannot uh, finish the P1 because P2 also enter already. So you cannot uh, do it together. This requirement called as virtual exclusion. Exclusion. You can see here now you have several terms. Might be also uh, asked in the multiple question uh, for lot question, which is okay. Uh, what is the critical selection section? So might be you were given with the example. Uh, then said, is it a critical section or not? And another one more thing is entering uh, this requirement is known as a mutual as you exclusion. So might be you were given with uh, a code like this. So it will ask, is it a mutual as you exclusion? So you need to know mutual exclusion is a requirement. Uh, for the process, but uh, for this code access, it is a critical section. So you need to know the differentiation between these two terms. Okay, next we have. <coughs> Producer, uh, consumer problem. Producer, consumer problem is still under background. Okay, there's not yet touched even a critical selection problem. So several process work together to complete common tasks. We call as a process cooperation. You can see here it's quite similar to the first slide, which is cooperation process. When you have when you have a processes, which is mean that uh, two or more process work together to complete a task. So common paradigm uh, for cooperating process. Producer process <coughs> produce information that consumed by a consumer process. So example, example of this procedure consumer problem is compiler produce an assembly code which is consumed by assembler. So you still remember this is related to your COA subject when you have a compiler to uh, produce assembly code which is consumed by your assembler. Another one more thing is example web server provide HTML files which is consumed by the client web browser res requesting the resources a resource. So this is two example um, under a procedure consume problem. <coughs> okay. So suppose that we wanted to produce a uh, provide a solution to fill all the buffer where we allow the procedure and also your consumer processes to increment and decrement the same variable. So later on, you will notice that uh, you have a procedure and how it will affect also the consumer using your buffer. We can do so by adding another integer variable, which is counter. 
that keep track the number of full buffer, which is normally initially for the counter, it's going to set as zero. The variable counter, it is increment by the producer after produce a new buffer and it is decrement by a consumer after consume a buffer. So you have to differentiate between the producer increment and also decrement uh, throughout your consumer. Code is shown in the two slide here. Later on, you can see the example. But here, let's see what will happen. To enable your producer and consumer, which is later on, you can see affected by the buffer, to be executed concurrently. You want to execute concurrently your procedure and your consumer. A buffer will be known also as a shared memory is used for producer to put data while consumer access it. So, outbound buffer pro, uh, provide unlimited buffer size. You have two types of buffer. Uh, what is the needs of buffer? Which is a shared memory for you to use to run concurrently the procedure and consumer. So, two types which is unbound buffer and bound buffer. Unbound, you know the meaning of unbound so it is a unlimited while bound you have a range so you already fix the buffer size which is you already fix the range of the buffer let's say here you have the example abc uh, the buffer can be in any of these example stage one example number A here. Okay, example number A, which is you have a, a producer here and then consumer, you have a full buffer. You have a full buffer in between. So it is a full buffer. Uh, second, what uh, stages might be occur when you want to apply a buffer just to enable the producer and consumer to uh, execute concurrently is to have the partially buffer, empty buffer. So you have a partially empty buffer at this side. So this is second. Uh, stages that can be a cure and lastly you have the empty buffer so for the C it is empty buffer just for you to see the example of three stages that can be uh, come out when you try to use the buffer So, uh, here, producer put data in one slot while consumer retrieve data from another slot. So, this is the uh, task for the producer when you want to tag the buffer for the global variable. Uh, procedure will put the data in. In one slot, you have like several slot, while your consumer will retrieve the data from another slot. So it concurrently happen and run together. Procedure and consumer need to be synchronized so that consumer will not retrieve data before your producer put the data into the buffer. 
So you need to like have the collaboration between each other before the producer put the data into the slot. Uh, eh, sorry, the consumer will tag only the data after your uh, producer put the data in. Therefore, producer need to wait if buffer is already full. When it's already full, you need to wait uh, to fit in with uh, another uh, data slot in. Consumer need to wait for buffer. Uh, need to wait if buffer is empty. So I hope that you understand this in a situation which is procedure if let's say the buffer is full, procedure cannot put anything else inside, isn't it? But consumer can tag because you already uh, put the data inside. The procedure already put, so it's already full. So it is turn from consumer to tag, tag, tag. Procedure can put in uh, data to the slot when it's empty. Or might be there is a partially empty slot for the producer. So it can put in. But when it's already empty because consumer already take it away all. So consumer need to wait. Because it's already empty. Need to wait. Uh, if the buffer empty, wait for producer to put data in the slot. So this is a example that is two slide here in term of a producer process when you want to have a producer and also consumer all together. <coughs> you can see here a uh, conditions of a while while true you can see the comment here producer produce an item in the next produce so while counter equal to buffer size so you're going to do <coughs> uh, you're going to see that buffer in net produce so this one in terms of in in plus one the buffer size is depend also if you still remember in terms of the size of the buffer whether you are using the unbound buffer or you use, use the bar buffer so counter also will be count increase uh, as already mentioned in the counter side just now And uh, initially, it's going to set as a zero as usual. And uh, this one is if a counter equal to zero. And this for a consumer. So you can see also here in the statement, the producer will incre increment. But for consumer, it will decrease. decrease. So similar also at this side, for the consumer side, it will be decrease the counter. While for the producer, it's going to increase. So that is the difference between producer and also consumer. <coughs> okay, now we uh, look into the bounded buffer problem so under bounded buffer problem <coughs> you have a uh, share variables in out counter and buffer oops uh, this is the share variables that can be available in your uh, code but also while you are running a program. So initial value 
for your in, out and counter normally. Initially, it's going to be set as a zero. But uh, routines are correct if they execute independently. So this is the example of the code. Uh, it's referred to here. However, it may also give a problem if you run concurrently when the process are not synchronized properly. That will be happen. That's why it's mentioned here. Uh, it need to be synchronized to achieve the process. So now you can see the example here. Uh, when you have a procedure, this one you know as a buffer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All together for your buffer, you have 6. And of course, you have a consumer. So if current counter equal to 5, and the statement for producer will be increased. For the consumer, it will be decreased. You're going to execute it concurrently. Then the counter may be 4, 5 or 6. Uh, because 6 is the maximum. The correct value is 5 synchronized properly uh, for the uh, counter. When a counter equal to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, consumer will be decreased and counter will be increased. Each statement consists of several machine instruction. When you have counter, counter uh, equal to plus one, this is under procedure which is going to add on or increase. But for the consumer, it will be decrease. Uh, decrease. So, the counter, let's say you register at the uh, register 1. So, it is similar. Uh, another example is you have register 1, register 1 plus 1, which is uh, your counter will be counting up. While for the consumer, of course, it's going to be reduced with 1. Okay, for the rest condition, counter equal to counter plus one, which is you're going to implement it in the producer. So, register equal to counter, this one is quite similar to the previous slide here, the example when you want to have a, a producer a consideration. And this one is for the consumer. So consider the execution interleaving with the count of 5 initially. Let's say you have the count as 5 at the beginning. So first of all, what will happen when you produce, execute your register 1? Register 1 is under your producer. So producer at register 1 initially is 5. This one is buffer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now you are pointing here for your producer. So you're going to count it up because this one you're going to fill in the uh, data in. This one is your consumer producer. So here is your producer which is point at 5. And then producer will be execute. This statement when you have register 1 plus 1 to increase the counting up. So it will be counting to 6. While at the same time also concurrently going to execute your uh, consumer which is your register 2. Register 2 is equal to counter 
initially the count is 5. So you have the counting 5 for initial consumer. After that, your consumer will do the register 2 equal to register 2 minus 1 which is decrease 1. So it will be it will be go to the 4. And then after that you're going to see where is now. So this is the things. Just now you can see producer is here at 6 and consumer now at 4. That's why when you try to execute the last line here, produce as you get counter equal to register 1. So register 1 is already at 6 and your counter is equal to register 2 which is at 4. Because of this, you can see at the last line, you have run this and this uh, single line. You need to remember you execute it and run it uh, concurrently. And synchronously, you run, you get the counter value with the different value. This is called a synchronized problem, which is press condition. It, uh, you run it together which is called currently when you run together you're going to get the counter value is different sum of the problem for the synchronized and we call as a rest condition so rest condition uh definition you already look into also the rest condition but now we look deeper on the rest condition in terms of definitions. So for definition, you have two definitions here in this slide. Definition one, a situation whereby at least two processes. So you can have three, four and more. At least when you have two, when you try to perform operation on the share data, just now also you already know what, what is the problem. And the outcome depends on the order of data access. Result of process must be independent of the speed of execution of the concurrent process. So depend on the control or data synchronization mechanism. That is one cases under rest condition. But I think this one is already uh, quite familiar with all of you because several uh, example we have done in terms of the problem that might be a cure. So uh, definition two for rest condition is when a situation you have multiple threads as access uh, as a data access a data item without coordination in a multi-threaded application. So possibly causing the inconsistent result depending on which thread reach the data item first. So multi-thread <coughs> normally access or use a share variable. So this is two definition uh, that share in this slide, but it might be you can try to look into the uh, notes at uh, John Willy and Sun. Uh, I share you already the extra notes. You can see there is several other example under the rest condition. So when you have a problem, just now you already look into the problem of the rest condition. Uh, you can see also there is a several problem. So you need to have a solution. So what is the solution of the rest condition is uh, ensure only one process at time. 
can manipulate the share variable. So it is depend also on your counter. Therefore, process synchronization is needed. You need to synchronize it. That's why it is under module 6, synchronization. Means that you're going to coordinate the activities of two or more process. Like just now, you have the producer and consumer. You need to synchronize them together using the counter. Synchronization is necessary to ensure that interdependence code is executed in proper sequence. So you try to execute it uh, properly uh, following the sequence. Uh, and you're going to see that it is independent code. So how you're going to solve the rest condition? This one is just uh, inform you, okay, what is the solution? But how? You know the solution already, but how you're going to solve it? So we're going to uh, make sure that educations of counter equal to plus one execution equal to counter plus one execute as anatomic action so while being execute no other instruction can execute concurrently when you execute this statement similar also when you try to execute this statement the last time for the concurrent uh, uh, consumer there is no other instruction can be executed when you try to execute it. So only one process in one time. The ability to execute an instruction or number of instruction is crucial for being able to solve many of your synchronization problems. That's why after this, you're going to have a a solution for all the problem uh, this one you just learn okay there is a possible uh, problem that happen when you execute concurrently uh, two or more process together uh, and you know that this is the solution that you need to come up with so might be in the exercise you can try to look into and I think it's hard for me to continue the class also. Uh, <laughs> I stopped several times already. So maybe you can try to do exercise. And later on in next class, we're going to continue with our uh, section 2 and uh, onward. Uh, sorry, I guess I think there is several classes that I already like cut off the time especially. Uh, I hope <laughs> I hope it's not going to continue because uh, I also cannot do my works or uh, when I got flu like this and I got fever so I sleep. <laughs> After I come back home I always sleep. So normally if you uh, are my student last time and you uh, did project with me normally i will sleep at like 3 a.m in the morning uh at evening uh, or afternoon i did not sleep and that is uh, the person of me i cannot sleep uh, if i sleep i'm going to ha get headed but now <laughs> when i fell six so i always sleep <laughs> I cannot do my work, so I cannot focus, so it's very hard for me. Mm. And I think that uh, I don't want to get fever or flu anymore. <laughs> so I hope after my friend helped me uh, solve the problem with the cat. But I think uh, we're not going to take it away from that house. Uh, I'm going to, as soon as possible, go and move to my new house or at new house i told my children i said no more cat <laughs> because i'm the i'm the person who very hard to get uh and fell six so i said to them okay look into i never feel sick uh, before this uh normally they 
if I take care of them, um, last time my son also get COVID, uh, I didn't get anything. So whenever you they get flu, they get fever, uh, it's not affect me at all. So I, I, I'm like, might be quite a strong person, but uh, it's happened when there are too many cats, five all together, last time six. So whenever I come out to the uh from house, so there is like a smell of cat. So I cannot. Sometimes they coming in, uh when we open the door. So uh I think because of that because it start last 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 month uh Ramadan, so uh they get too too many kids I guess. So it's affect me. So I cannot. So we try to as soon as possible. I think. By this week, I'm going to try to move to my new house. So I hope that with the new environment, I'm not going to fail six anymore. Okay, sorry for the class. I think too many hours I cut already. Uh, I'm going to continue with the video later on or extra class if it is necessary. Okay. So if you have any problem, you can. WhatsApp me or contact me, and too many WhatsApp. Also, I did not reply. <laughs> I cannot focus. I cannot also like look at my phone or my uh, computer. So whenever I didn't have class, I go back to home and sleep. <laughs> okay, thank you, class. Uh, have a nice day and take care. Bye bye.